Valerie G here with May Arts Ribbon and today instead of doing a technique video I am really going to just do a walkthrough of a project that I've made for today's blog hop. So this week May Arts Ribbon is working with Basically Bare and Art Anthology and these are the products that I picked. Now the album I actually worked with is a bit different than this one. Um, but this one has all chipboard pages with envelopes and these cute inserts. The one that I chose to work with was a little bit more of a mixed media kind of album because I really wanted to play with using the art anthology products on a bunch of different surfaces. So what I picked for my art anthology products is a velvet dimensional paint in Mardi Gras, which is sort of this creamy purple matte opaque color. I also picked their Sorbet which uh, Viridian which is a turquoise sparkly transparent color and then to go along with that the um, coloration spray that I picked is WMA Bay and it's this pretty turquoise color. So we're going to be using these products along with this die cuts with a view stack which is their brand new uh, coral and navy paper stack. Super pretty, you'll get to see almost all of the papers in my project. And then of course, gobs and gobs of gorgeous May Arts ribbon. So let's get started. Here is the album that I have made for this week's project. Like I said, super fun mixed media album. Lots and lots of elements here, and I just want to kind of walk you through some of the things that I did. For starters, I tied a double looped bow out of some May Arts ribbon, and I dyed some May Arts twine using the um, sorbet paint. So what I did is I just watered it down and it already has all this great sparkle inside of it, so I put it in a container and soaked some ribbon in it. That's what I also did with this butterfly ribbon. So you can see it starts off, this canvas ribbon, as sort of an ivory color, and I drenched it in this watered-down paint and came out with this fantastic turquoise and sparkly butterfly ribbon. So I used this in the album as well. The other thing that I've done on here is I've taken some plain clear dewdrop kind of uh, gems, crystals, and I went ahead and just took the sorbet and painted it straight on and let it dry, and you can still see through them, and they now look like this beautiful sparkly turquoise color, and I thought that was real pretty. So, um, lots of distressing on this album. All of my papers, I've distressed the edges. I did some hand stitching on some of the papers to add some extra texture. This page on the front cover here is real fun because I took the May Arts ribbon, which comes just like this, and went ahead and pleated it with my sewing machine. I did pin it for each pleat before stitching it to make sure that the pleats stayed really nice, but I thought that added a nice fun texture on the side. This was done using some Dreamweaver's embossing paste, which I colored with the sorbet paint before applying it with a mask with a template and the embossing paste and then some machine stitching around the outside. So inside, I've done one of my ribbon hinged flip books. I wanted lots and lots of places to put photos and journaling and tidbits in this album. Here's some of that butterfly ribbon which I've colored purple with the paint. This was actually a piece of the packaging. It did not come originally in the album. It was the plastic envelope that some of the pages came in for one of the other albums, but I went ahead and punched holes in the side so that I could include it as an element here in my mini album. Now this fantastic technique I accomplished by painting very thickly with the transparent sorbet, and then I used an acrylic stamp to remove the pattern. I don't know if you can see, there is this flourish pattern stamped into the paint, which is super, super fun. And on the flip side, I did the same thing, different stamp, 
but with that more opaque paint that and that look that you get from the velvet paint. So this also opens and then I've just slipped a note card in here as a place for some journaling or some photos. But one of the other things I love, let me put this behind, is the way that this looks with the two paints on opposite sides of this plastic where they overlap you get this super beautiful blended look and I think that that looks really fantastic. So I did put in a couple of just handmade tags which I've embellished. I've painted this using that sorbet paint. This page was corrugated cardboard and so I did a lot of distressing, painted some white acrylic paint on here to really bring out the texture of that cardboard. And on the flip side, I tied this great bow with some sheer May Arts ribbon. And I went ahead and just looped that through the binding rings all the way around and under this page. So you get a little hint of it here with the cardboard showing through and then the great bow on this side. This page was an envelope pocket page. So I just covered that slipped a little piece of cardstock in there for some extra journaling room. And then this is that hand dyed turquoise now butterfly ribbon from May Arts. A little bit more hand stitching here. This is some twine. I used the lightest color of May Arts twine that I had with sort of that super soft beige and white. And when I dyed it, you can't even tell which pieces were the dark color and which pieces were the light and I was able to just separate some of that so that I had a smaller thickness of baker's twine to sort of work with. I did find this made the twine really stiff but I think it's kind of cute because you get this cute kinky corkscrew kind of look to your ribbon which is super fun and a nice dimension. Now this page is one that I also just added in by taking a piece of cardstock folding it in half, punching my holes, and then sticking it in here. And on the back side, we've got this little tri-fold spot for a little extra room. This page was a clear acetate page. I went ahead and left it pretty plain because there's a lot going on here. But what I did is I simply embossed on here with a template and again, that Dreamweaver embossing paste. And I really wanted to highlight that, so on the back side is where I put that patterned paper with the uh, sketchy polka dots on it, and a pretty piece of punch of color here with some ribbon, and kind of let that piece speak for itself. And on the flip side, I've put on a little pocket with one of the little tags, and then another little folder where I once again have done flip pages for lots and lots of room for journaling and photos. I plan on really packing this album with lots and lots of goodness. These little envelope pages were super fun to do. I did some hand stitching around the outside just to really set off the shape. And then inside I've made little booklets which I hand bound with some May Arts twine and just folded some pages in half and then did the quick three hole binding down the middle to hold them all together and that'll be a great spot for some photos and then some empty room for journaling on each page. And I've done the same thing inside of this one. This next page I also left fairly plain at this stage. I may do some stamping up here with a a nice sentiment or phrase once I get some photos in here and I know exactly what I want it to say. But this canvas page, I misted first with the coloration spray, super concentrating it in the corner over here. Then I took some of the Dick Blick embossing paste, which is a little creamier um, and um, a little bit of a thinner consistency than the Dreamweaver embossing paste, and I mixed it with the velvet dimensional paint and then embossed this image on here and I'm super happy with the way that that turned out. It's a nice crisp image on there. Now I've left this page intentionally blank so that you can see the difference between these two techniques. On the outside of this corrugated cardboard piece I painted with some gesso. 
um, just the Claudine Helmuth standard white studio gesso. And after that dried, I went in with the dimensional paint and you can see how vibrant that color is when you put it on top of the white gesso and here in the middle where I was kind of cleaning off my brush, you can see what that looks like if you don't paint the white underneath it. I did the exact same kind of experiment on the flip side with that um, sorbet paint, which is kind of translucent. And I really love how you can see how bright that color is and compared to how dark it would be if I hadn't put the gesso underneath. And then this is the last page. And since it's the cover and it's a nice strong chipboard piece, I went nice and crazy. I've got nine flip pages in here, all of them bound with different kinds of May Arts ribbon so that there's lots of places for me to put some final photos and final words. And that's it. So thanks for joining me today. I hope that you like my big, thick, chunky, basically bare album that I've modified here. I'm super excited to use it and to stick some photos in and I think it'll turn out great. So if uh, you have questions about any of the techniques that I used or you want more details, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you or maybe make some tutorial videos of something if there's you know, a particular technique that people are interested in and want to see more of. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day.